going to do a quick video here uh, today. Um, I thought of this uh, this past weekend. We had field day uh, for amateur radio, and that's where we um, uh, a lot of us will go out in the middle of a, a nowhere emergency group. Went out to uh, um, a park and uh, ran our transmitters and transceivers off emergency power and uh, tried to see how many contacts we could get um, using emergency power. I uh, had to work all weekend so I did most of the contest uh, here from home. Uh, I ran a one delta which, mean, which means a single operator under commercial power but uh, tried to get a lot of the other uh, guys around the country that were uh, out on field they used an emergency power so it was kind of fun and uh, had some difficulties tuning my antenna and so I thought what I'd do is I'd shoot a video real quick and uh, listen a lot of people out there are going to know how to do this but uh, I know when I first got my uh, my transceiver and uh, my HF radio here um, uh, it was awful difficult I, I wasn't really sure how to tune an antenna so there may be a few people out there maybe new hams that uh, I don't know how to tune their antenna so um, I've got a dipole up about 35 feet uh, that antenna is good from 10 meters all the way through 80 meters, which is um, 29 megahertz all the way down through um, 3 megahertz. Uh, but each band needs to be tuned, um, and I have a manual tuner. So they've got automatic tuners out there right now that, uh, hey, you just push down the key and uh, uh, it automatically matches itself to the antenna, and uh, you're good to go. Um, I unfortunately... I uh, don't have that much money to get one of those, so uh, for $30 when I bought my transceiver, I got this manual tuner. What happens is um, when you transmit, uh, if your uh, radio isn't matched well with your antenna, um, your transmit power will go out of here, out of your antenna. Um, and if it's not tuned properly, you actually have some uh, RF energy that comes back down through into your radio. And uh, you can actually measure that here, okay, if we have our switch up here turned to set, when we transmit, this needle will show us how much out power or outgoing power we have. Um, and if we want to uh, measure the standing wave ratio, or SWR, which is the reflected power that comes back down into the radio, we turn this to SWR, and this needle will show us how much uh, power is being reflected back down into the radio and that's not a good thing you can damage your radio very quickly um, but also uh, whatever re power is being reflected back down into the radio um, you know is obviously power that's not going out transmitting so you're certainly not going to be putting that much power out so again I've got a, um, a manual tuner and I'll show you how I do that uh, you're, you're probably going to laugh a little bit I don't have a CW key down here so in order to to send a signal out to measure, I have to whistle into the microphone. So I'll show you how I do that in uh, just a second. Um, again, what I do is uh, when I find a frequency, and there was a gentleman calling CQ on this frequency here, and I think he's gone now, but uh, um, what I do is uh, whenever I am, and this this really bothers me, and it, it happened quite a, quite a bit this weekend when there was a lot of traffic on the radio, is somebody will be calling uh, CQ which is calling for any station so uh, looking for anybody to answer him and there will be four or five guys trying to get a hold of him and there will be somebody that's tuning up right on that frequency and man he's sending a loud signal through and uh, so what I do is if somebody's calling on this frequency here I always usually go about three or four kilohertz up so I'll go one two three about three kilohertz up and when I first start this I'll turn my power this outside ring is my power. I'll turn my power and all the way down. somebody else uh, talking right now, so I'm going to go a little bit more off frequency here. And uh, first I want to switch my inductor. And that's going to give, if you can hear the audio, you're going to hear the loudest signal possible. You know, that really drops off there, so I want to go up. That seems about, D is about my loudest signal there. So I'm going to use that as my inductor. I'm all the way up in SWR here, so I'm going to, this needle is going to be measuring how much reflected power is coming back. So let's see how much. So if I whistle here, 
needle doesn't move, so that's a good thing. So I'm going to turn my power up a little bit more on my transceiver. <whistles> Nothing moving there, so that's a good sign. See our needle moving a little bit, so that's going to tell me that there's a little bit of power coming back. So I'm going to adjust my antenna match and my and my um, transmitter match here to get that needle to go to zero. So we're going to whistle and try to get that needle down to zero. See that needle drop to zero? Now I'm going to turn my power all the way up. And that's a flat match there. The needle's not moving. So I know now when I transmit, all that power is going to be going out of the antenna and nothing is going to be coming back down into the, uh, the, the, the transceiver. So I'm going to go back to set and when I transmit that needle should spike because this is going to tell me how much forward power I have going out. And that's flattened out. Another thing I can always tell is you can see when I'm really got a good match to my antenna. Uh, when I transmit, you'll see the lights dim on the radio, and you know that's uh, creating as much power as it can. So you can see that match. You can see the meter here. 100 watts going all the way out. So you know we've got a good match, and we've got a lot of power going out. So what I'll do is I'll go here somewhere where there's a blank frequency, somewhere it's not being used. I'll turn my power all the way back down here. And uh, here I'm going to turn it back to SWR. I'm going to listen for the loudest signal again. That's pretty loud. Sounds like the loudest there, so I know that's the right inductor, so I'm getting close. Um, so I've got it on SWR, I got my power down, so let's see how much reflected power I have coming back in. Quite a bit. So there we got a good match going there, so I'm going to turn my power up to about halfway. A good match. Let's turn it all the There we go. There's full power tuned in. We go over to here. Watch the lights on the radio. And the easiest thing to do, like I did, sometimes you have to turn the power down real low to get her fine tuned in and then turn the power up slowly to make sure she's zeroed in. But, you know, I enjoy doing it this way. Obviously, uh, Maybe I'll get tired of it and uh, get a, an automatic tuner, but uh, I like doing it this way. The, like I said, this uh, antenna tuner only cost me thirty dollars. Does just fine. I made uh, thirty or thirty-five contacts in about twenty-one or twenty-two states uh, for the field day competition, so I was happy with that. Um, like I said, you know, you really want to make sure all your power is going up and out your antenna. Here's some other guy who's tuning up on this frequency here, too. So, we'll see, maybe he'll give a call out in a few minutes. He might have heard me tuning up, too, so. But hope that's uh, informative, um, uh, and, and that's just how you kind of, tu uh, you know, uh, manually tune an antenna. All right, we'll see you guys. I just uh, finished up that video a couple seconds ago, and I was turning around the, tuning around the bands and come across the station here transmitting. Okay, my log's kind of locking up. And, uh... <laughs> Over here, um, I kind of did, uh, uh, I heard a weird call sign, XL3S, and it is actually a special event station on Niagara Falls, Canada. So, it's not too far away from me, it's only about uh, three, 400 miles away, but uh, I'm going to try to contact them. Um, it's going to be a special event that they're doing for a whole month on a walk that they're doing. And uh, you can hear them. Uh, she represents where our countries are divided now. That's, uh, that's to her efforts. She warns the uh, British that the Americans were coming. And, uh, of course, the stands were where they were. 
but, uh, but you're sounding good up here, Ray, you're a 59. And uh, my location is in the Niagara Peninsula, right near the village of Queenston, in the town of Thorold, over. Let's see if we can give him a call here in just a minute. Okay, thanks a lot, Ray. And uh, if you'd like any further information, everything is available on QRZ.com. And uh, there's links there for Laura Secord, links there for the 1812 stuff, and uh, and uh, how to get a special event QSL card. Over. Bye-bye, 73 and QRZ from X-Ray Lima 3 Sierra. A Whiskey 8 Sierra Whiskey X-Ray. Okay, I got a Whiskey 8. You're a big signal, but there's a station ending in Juliet. Let me take you first. Uh, the station ending in Juliet. Okay, Whiskey 3 Alpha November. Sounds like you heard my station, so we'll give another call here in just a minute and see what happens. W3ANJ from XL3S. Thank you very much. I'm still waiting for my log to catch up here. Hopefully it won't take forever. There we go. I'm just going to get you in the log here now to make sure your call comes up right and everything will be good. And uh, and then we'll pick up the WA. But thanks for coming back to the call. My name is Rick, as you've gotten. And all the information is available on QRZ.com. So 73. Okay, there was the uh, WA station. Go ahead. Yeah, Whiskey 8 Sierra Whiskey X-Ray. Okay, Whiskey 8 Sierra Whiskey X-Ray. You've also got a big signal here right now. And let me get uh, you in my log here, just make sure it's going to work. Uh, now, what was the call again, Whiskey 8 Sierra? Uh, that was correct, Whiskey 8 Sierra Whiskey X-Ray. Okay, got it. It seems like it's going to take it. Oh, my log's just uh, playing games with me, Sierra. <laughs> Let me get your log again. I'll write it down on paper. I'll transfer it over in a bit here. Over. <laughs> no problem. A Whiskey 8 Sierra Whiskey X-Ray. Uh, we're in Muskegon, Michigan, right along the lake shore of uh, Lake Michigan here. Okay, well, you're sounding good. You're sounding really good here. Uh, you're a 5, 9, and 10 dB. Beautiful uh, sounding signal and audio. Over. Uh, very good. Uh, just uh, checking out some of the information on your webpage there, and I think it's a great uh, great thing you guys are doing. Uh, it's a lot of fun to get out on those uh, event stations, and uh, we did a little bit of work uh, uh, this past weekend on field day. So uh, uh, good job out there, guys, and uh, appreciate what you do, and it's uh, kind of nice to have a little bit of exposure for amateur radio out there too. Oh, it sure is. And in fact, on our special event, that day of the walk, which was uh, field day Saturday morning, we had a special event set up at uh, uh, just just uh, about uh, a, a kilometer away or a half a mile away from our field day site at uh, one of the colleges where there's a walk, the Laura Secord walk. They, they reenacted the walk. And our prime minister's wife took place and, and actually come up through uh, our field day site as we were putting everything together, getting ready for field day. So that, although I, I don't get excited about stuff like that, it was interesting that uh, that she had come up and uh, and graced our, us with her presence. Of course, it gave us some more field day points, being that it was uh, somebody of <laughs> political power. Over. <laughs> Very good, very good. Yeah, it's neat. Uh, it, sometimes it doesn't take a whole lot to be uh, bitten by the amateur radio bug, that's for sure. And uh, I think anybody, doesn't matter who you are, that comes by and takes a look at what we do is uh, certainly piques their interest. I don't think there's a whole lot of stuff, a uh, whole lot of uh, hobbies, if you will, uh, that don't have some sort of radio or electronic backgrounds to it. So I got one other favor to do. I was actually shooting a small video here on how to uh, manually tune an antenna tuner and came across your field day. So uh, I'm sorry, you're a special event station, so I'm kind of videotaping this, and I'm hoping it's okay. If it's not, we'll delete her off the old camera, but uh, it's kind of funny that I was just shooting a, a small video on how to uh, <laughs> how to uh, tune an antenna there. No, no, that's no problem. I, it, will, will it end up on YouTube? Over. You will. Uh, I'll, I've got all your contact information on here on QRZ, and I'll have to send you a link to it if that's all right. I'm sure that uh, the QSL manager, Dave, will be glad to uh, 
to uh, to add a link, maybe on the uh, on the site itself for XL3S. So when you get it up there, send off a uh, some info to Dave. Uh, Dave's all Dave's emails are on the XL3S site, and I bet you he'll put a link up. Over. Uh, very good, very good. I appreciate everything you're doing again. Uh, thanks for the contact. I'll let you get back to work. And again, uh, a good job doing what you're doing out there. And uh, like I said, we looked at the web page, and I think you guys are doing a fantastic job uh, with the walk. So with that, I'll bid you 73. Good luck with everything. And uh, again, you're 5'9 coming in here from Muskegon, Michigan. So again, I'll say 73, and uh, take care. Okay, thank you from Muskegon, Michigan. And we'll clear with you and... Uh and yeah, just look us up on QRZ, all the info's there and everything. Thanks a lot. And uh, QRZ, this is X-Ray Lima 3 Sierra, special event call. So that was kind of different. I didn't expect anything like that to happen. But uh, again, here's all their information, and it's kind of neat. Uh, um, and there's some of the pictures he said of the walk that's coming through. So no need to show this all here. Because uh, I'm sure, hey, if you get a link to this, you'll go out there and check them out. But uh, what turned out to be just a small video on how to uh, tune an antenna will uh, kind of comes up with something a little bit exciting like that. So, uh, 73, everybody out there, and we'll talk to you soon. See ya.